Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting problem. And the problem is finding the minimal polynomial with integer coefficients that has square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 as one of its roots. So we are given one of the roots of this equation and it is a polynomial and it has integer coefficients and we want it to be minimal. Minimal meaning that if you take a polynomial with certain roots, you multiply it by a constant, which is non-zero constant, of course, and non-zero real constant, let me be very specific, and then you're going to get the roots uh, the same. So they're going to be the same. But we want it to be in the simplest form. So let's go ahead and find it. How do we go about finding this? Well, I, I, uh, I guess we could talk about Galois theory. Galois is a French mathematician, was killed in a duel. He did amazing things. Imagine if he lived until he was like 80 or 85, who knows? What would he discover? Anyways, that's something that bugs me all the time. But anyway, so how do we find this? First method. Did I say I'm going to present two methods? Maybe I didn't. Okay, now I did. First method. So I'm going to write, uh, since one of the roots is root 3 plus root 2, We can just write x equals this. Well, you can also write x sub 1, but uh, I don't like that notation. Let's just write x. It is x, right? So let's go ahead and subtract root 3. So my goal is to leave one of the radicals on one side, and I could do it to root 3 or root 2. It doesn't really matter. And I don't consider those two separate solutions, by the way. OK, my second method is going to be a little different. So now what am I going to do next? Uh, I want to find the polynomial equation with integer coefficients. Obviously, I don't want irrational numbers. So let's go ahead and square both sides. Kind of like rationalizing it, but by squaring. And this is going to give us the following. x squared minus 2 root 3x plus root 3 squared is just 3 and root 2 squared is just 2. So uh, it's pretty rational, almost there. The only problem is we have the irrational root 3. So let's go ahead and put it on the other side and bring the uh, 2 over here. So it's going to be x squared plus 1 equals 2 root 3 multiplied by x. So every time, and this is a general strategy, I'm leaving the radical on one side by itself as much as possible, of course, then square it because I want to get the maximum uh, bang for the buck, right? So now, what am I going to do next? And if you said square both sides, you guessed it right. Let's do it and get rid of the other radical. So now this is going to give me x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. You know the formula, a plus b quantity squared, which is very common. Now how do you square a product? You square every factor and multiply together. It's going to be like 4 times 3, which is 12x squared. Let's go ahead and combine like terms, the usual stuff, you know. Bring the 12 over. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. That is x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So we started off with an x. And when you solve this equation, obviously, x is going to satisfy this equation. And x, by the way, was root 3 plus root 2. So this equation definitely has one of the roots as this one. But we also introduced extraneous roots, which is fine, by the way. And we'll talk about this a little later. Towards the end, I'm going to talk about the roots of this equation, all the roots. OK, great. So let's go ahead, by the way. <laughs> This answers the question, so we this brings us to the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and use the second method. And we should be finding the same equation, right? And this is the minimal polynomial because look at the coefficients. They are integers. And also, uh, this can't be simplified. Great. Second method is slightly different, only slightly. But don't worry. After the second method as a bonus, I'll talk about uh, some other stuff. Cool. The second method basically involves just squaring both sides. No isolating the radicals. And this is okay. You can do it. If you square both sides, you're going to get x squared equals root 3 squared, which is 3. Root 2 squared is 2. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. And 2 times the product is 2 root 6. Hmm. Interesting, right? Don't worry. We'll revisit 5 plus 2 root 6. Uh, we're going to reverse the process later on. But let's go ahead and really get rid of the radical. Notice that these methods are different because I'm getting kind of different things. If you look at it carefully, you're going to notice that they're not the same thing, right? Great. OK, so hopefully that's good enough. Now, we're going to square both sides. 
that was expected, right? So when you square both sides, you know, the formula x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 25, and 4 times 6 is 24. Uh-oh, if I bring the 24 over, I get x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And that's exactly what I got with the first method. Is that a surprise? No, it shouldn't be. We should be getting the same answer all the time, no matter which method you use, as long as your method is mathematically correct. Awesome. So this is the second method, and we got the polynomial equation. Now here is the a different look. So I guess we can call this section bonus, or if you want to call it third method, analysis, whatever, anything. So now let's go ahead and take a look. Let's take a look at the equation x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. It's kind of like working backwards, and it's also checking our work too. Like, did we get it right if I solve this equation? If I can solve this equation and find one of the roots to be root 3 plus root 2, then I get it right. So it's kind of like a checking mechanism also, right? So how am I going to solve this equation though, right? Water break. To solve this equation, I, uh, well, this is called a biquadratic. So it's quartic, but uh, it's sort of quadratic. I can use my favorite method. Yay, substitution. Okay, x squared equals y, and you know y, right? I like y. So y squared minus 10y plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, and again, I love completing the square, so I'm going to write it as y squared minus 10y plus 25 minus 24 equals 0 because this is y minus 5 quantity squared, and that is 24, in case you didn't know. So now I do have um, a perfect square, which is equal to 24, which is perfect. So from here, I can safely say that y minus 5 is either uh, root 24, which is, by the way, it is 2 root 6, okay? It, it's plus minus, okay, fine, plus minus 2 root 6. I know I write the plus minus differently, so don't worry about it too much. And from here, y becomes... 5 plus minus 2 root 6. Hmm. I wasn't trying to solve for y. I was trying to solve for x, but y is equal to x squared. Awesome. Let's go ahead and back substitute. Replace y with x squared, and you get the following. So let me go ahead and re, uh, separate these roots so I can solve my biquadratic. And here, so we kind of have 5 plus 2 root 6. And this is why I told you pay attention to this piece right here. Uh, when you square root 3 plus root 2, what did you get? 5 plus 2 root 6. Wow, that's awesome. So if you square root it, you're going to get what? Root 3 plus root 2. But remember, there are... Okay, so I can write it as root 3 plus root 2 quantity squared. And you got to remember, there are two numbers whose square equals a positive real number, right? And so one of them is going to be root 3 plus root 2. And the other one... Like, the other one is going to be the opposite of that. And we can safely say the same thing, something similar here. The roots are going to be root 3 minus root 2 and root 2 minus root 3. And guess what? These are all the roots of this quartic equation. And notice that they are conjugates. They're kind of friends. They're good guys, so on and so forth. Ga guys and gals. Let's not discriminate. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.